Welcome to July MANA students. My name is Mackenzie. If you don't already know it, I am so excited to begin this July series with you. Whether you're watching on MANA Church's YouTube or the MANA students Facebook, or you're watching this video on a TV or a computer at your student site group, I want to welcome you and thank you so much for tuning in. We are beginning a new series this month. It is called Jesus Is and I'm really excited about it. There are so many words to describe who Jesus actually is, and we're not gonna pinpoint exactly all of them, but we are gonna choose one word to describe who Jesus is each week out of this month. And so my question to you to begin today is who is Jesus? If you could choose your own word to describe who Jesus is, just one word, what word would it be? In the New Testament, when Jesus was out doing miracles, doing his doing his work, uh, there was a lot of questions that were asked about him. There were a lot of people who were wondering who this person was and what he was doing. So there was a lot of questions asked about him because to be fair, Jesus was completely flipping the narrative on how to have a relationship with the Lord and to be religious. There were actually a few religious leaders of that day in which Jesus lived called the Sadducees and the Pharisees. The Sadducees uh, were people who had power over the Jerusalem temple and the Sanhedrin. They were people who were basically in charge of the religious and the legal issues of the Jewish people. And the Pharisees, they were teachers of the law, um, teachers of the religious belief. And both of these people, although their, their religious beliefs didn't exactly align in, in every sort of way, they were people of religious power over Jewish people. You see, both the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they made it a point to undermine who Jesus is or who Jesus was during that time. They they actually thought that Jesus was out to steal their power. And so Jesus, we know now, and from reading from the New Testament, learning about who Jesus is, Jesus, we know now, wasn't there to steal their power. He actually was just there to bring the truth about God um, and to bring life and bring it abundantly. Uh, yet the leaders, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, um, and even some Jewish people were far from the truth and they often, they acted out of self in it, selfishness and they acted out of the desire for power. Um, obviously not out of a relationship with the Lord and for encouraging people in their relationship with the Lord like the way that Jesus does um, or the way that Jesus did during this time. You see, Jesus and his teachings were often questioned by these people. They questioned him, but they weren't the only ones. Even the disciples would sometimes ask who Jesus is or what Jesus was doing. We spend chapters in the New Testament talking about who Jesus is and people having people ask questions about who Jesus is and, and what he's doing. And then actually in Matthew 16, 13 through 16, we read of Jesus actually asking his disciples who they think he is. So it says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. I love that question. Jesus says, who do you say I am? From your perspective, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answers, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus asks a similar type of question to the Pharisees. It goes like this, Matthew 22, 41 through 46. It says, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, what do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, how is it then that David, speaking by the spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply, and from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. So hold on, imagine this. Jesus is asking you questions. Jesus is questioning you basically about who he is, but also maybe some theology from the Old Testament about, about David or who David was. 
but basically what we come down to is Jesus is the son of God. The, the disciples got it correct. Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the Messiah. Yet that is true, but let's dig a little bit deeper about what that means. You see, the concept of the Messiah was, Messiah was a little complex. Uh, in the Old Testament, it was believed that the Messiah would be a king. It was believed that the Messiah would actually be a heavenly sort of being. Um, the Pharisees didn't see Jesus as a king or a heavenly being though. Like I said before, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, all they saw Jesus as was a threat to their power. But through the acts of Jesus, we see he truly is the Messiah. We know that, we know that now. Um, and in John 8, 12 through 18, we read that Jesus is fully man and fully God. It says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are appearing as your own witnesses. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if, my even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are true because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me in your own law. It is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is my Father who sent me. Jesus is God here on earth. He can testify on his own behalf because of the authority that is given to him by the Father. Not only that, Jesus can offer healing and he can offer forgiveness based on that same authority. So that's what that verse in John is really talking about. The Pharisees are asking Jesus, what gives you authority to testify here? What gives you the validity to talk about yourself or to do all of these things? And Jesus says he can testify on his own behalf because he has authority from God, because he is God on earth. He is the son of man as well as the son of God. And with that same authority that he has to testify for himself, he has the same authority to heal and he has the same authority to forgive, which is what we see him do over and over again in the New Testament as he brings miracles, as he heals people, all of those things. And in Mark 2, 1 through 7, we actually read this as an example, we read Jesus acting this out um, of his healing and his forgiveness that he has to offer us. In Mark 2, 1 through 7, Jesus heals a man and then forgives him of his sins. When Jesus tells this man his sins are forgiven, he's making a big statement. He's saying, I'm not just a good teacher, but my authority comes from God because I am God. Let me say that again. He's not just saying that he's a good teacher. He's saying that his authority comes from God because he is God. Let's read Mark 2, 1 through 7. It says, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get to him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat of the man who was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? They're asking these questions, the Pharisees are asking these questions because they missed a major part of the story. They missed the major fact that Jesus is able to forgive sins because he is God, because he has authority from God here on earth to do that. So they missed the whole point, the whole point of why Jesus came to walk on earth. They basically could have answered their own questions and all of the fighting could have been over at that at that point. But because their hearts um, were so set on their own power, they completely missed what God came here to do, what Jesus came here to do, what God did through Jesus. In this story, we read that Jesus healed a man physically and spiritually. 
What's really, really cool is we read this over and over again in the New Testament, but it's not just something that happens in the New Testament. Jesus offers the same things to us. He offers healing physically and spiritually under the same authority for us. I think there can be a lot of misconceptions today about who Jesus is, what he came and did and what he's doing now. Um, as we know, Jesus died and rose again three days later. We know that because of that, we have salvation through him. He died for our sins. And I'm not saying that's not a huge deal and we shouldn't recognize that fully. But what I am saying, what I do want us to understand, what I do want us to get is the fact that he lived on earth for 30 something years. And for three or so of those years, um, Jesus lived a life in which he went out and he preached about who God is. He acted out who God is here on earth. I mean, there are four books in the Bible written about him called the Gospels. They're all the same book, just written from different perspectives about the same guy, about Jesus. He, there are so many major reasons why this is so important, why he lived a life here on earth, why there are so many books in the Bible written about him. Obviously, he is very, very important. There are so many reasons why we have, all, have access to all of this information, why we talk about Jesus so much. But this is the one that I want you to get. This is what I want you to understand. Why is this so important? Well, it's our big idea for this week, and it is Jesus is... God. While on earth, Jesus was fully God, walking with his people, living with his people, and teaching them how, how to have life and how to have it to the fullest. And from the Bible, from the Gospels, from his life, we are to read that. We are to understand that Jesus offers the same thing to us because Jesus is here today with us. And all we have to do is seek him and find him through prayer, through the relationships that we have, through our small groups. Jesus is here and he is in the word and he comes to bring truth. All right, MANA students, that is the message that we have to you. We would intentionally love to talk about this more through our small group questions within our small group. So if you're watching this online, we'll add those questions to the comments below for you to think about, maybe talk through with either your friends or your parents or some of your family members or at your small groups.